Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. So this is a second part of RBI Grade B Phase 2 FM Current Affairs. So this is second part for the month of September 2019. My name is Ramandeep Singh and if there is any doubt in your mind regarding any question you can make a comment and I'm going to answer you. So the very first question as per the RBI's minimum holding period requirement the minimum see what is the minimum holding period requirement <clears throat> see students when nbfc see what is the job of nbfcs they take they source the loans from third party uh, like banks nhbs they take loan which are of like uh, the maturity period is generally less than 5 years <clears throat> and then they give loans uh nbfc's and hfc they gives home loans uh and auto loans and other types of loans in which the maturity period is generally more than five years so there is asset liability manage uh mismatch so to remove that problem what these nbfc's and hfc's do they pool the loans so the loans uh the loan that you have taken from an NBFC from Bajaj Finance from DHFL the house loan that you have taken that is a liability for you but that is an asset for the NBFC or HFC so uh, this money they are going to get in maybe next 20 year 25 years but they need to repay their loans in next five in next one two three or five years right so what they do is they pool these loans and sell these loans to the third party <clears throat> So, uh, if the loan value, the book value is 50 rupees, they can sell it at some discount, obviously, right? So, that is called securitization. This process is called the securitization. So, as per RBI's guidelines, uh, if an HFC or an NBFC, if they have uh, sold some loans to their customers, they need to hold some portion of that loan so if they have given a loan of 1 crore uh, 1 crore of house loan to somebody if an hfc has given 1 crore of housing loan uh, of 20 years they need to keep some part of this loan with them they cannot sell the 100% of this loan and they should receive some monthly installments before selling this loan they should have received some installments so it can be 6 10 12 what is that number the minimum number of installments to be paid off paid before securitization is dash monthly installments how many <clears throat> installments should have been received that is six installments six installments should have been received before securitizing a loan so six monthly installments or two quarterly installments two six monthly or two quarterly okay and how much percentage of this loan how much percentage of this loan that the nbfc should retain itself the minimum retention requirement for such loan is 20 percent so if the loan value is 20, uh, 1 crore for 20 years the nbfc should retain 20 lakh with them the 20 lakh value of the loan should be should remain in that asset to book of the nbfc otherwise uh, the hfc would become like a kind of a sales company they are just selling the housing loans making some profit out of it and then just securitizing it and selling it to banks and other financial institutions so to remove this problem to remove this obstacle first of all they should have received six installments monthly installment it used to be 12 but now it is six and secondly, they should retain 20% of the book value, 20% of the book value or the future cash flows, cash inflow, they should retain it. So really important. And that is a minimum holding period guidelines. In respect of loans of original maturity value above 5 years, this is applicable. So 6 monthly installments, it used to be 12 and they should retain 20% of the book value with them, it used to be 15%. <clears throat> one really important notification and circular by the rbi for pensioners so uh, one important change that have been made by the uh, rbi 
uh, if, if you are working at a bank you might have noticed and if your uh, friend brother husband wife father is working at a bank they might be uh, in the rural branch especially uh, you might have uh, discussed about the pensioners on the last day last working day of that month <clears throat> the pensions are distributed so and there is a lot of chaos in that uh, you know bank branch so rbi has solved it now uh, this distribution of pension has been spread in four days in four days the pension would be made and a lot of good changes have been made for them in case excess payment has been made to the pensioner and the pensioner <clears throat> assuming that this is that one of the installment of 15 lakh uh, to be given by the uh, our prime minister and uh, they assume that this is some sort of um, you know uh, some sort of grant by the government they use it jo kai bar aise hota hai excess payment account mein aa gayi pensioner ke and he spent it assuming that the government gave him some bonus or some grant so uh, the bank needs to take back that money in case that there is money in that pensioner's account the bank obviously bank and debit it but if there is no money in the pensioner's account the bank can deduct at max 1/3 of the future net pension payment of the pensioner so if the pensioner is getting a pension of 9000 rupees per month the bank can at most can debit rupees 3000 per month 1/3 one third of the net pay, uh, pension payment that is the maximum limit beyond that they cannot withdraw they cannot debit okay so bahut important hai so cash withdrawal limit at pos using the debit card and credit card is rupees 1000 in tier 1 tier 2 centers and how much what is tier 1 tier 2 <clears throat> is a, if the population is uh, more than 1 lakh it is a tier 1 city uh so tier 2 is 50000 to 99999 so 20000 to 49000 999 it is tier 3 then tier 4 tier 5 and tier 6 for tier 1 and tier 2 if the population is more than 50000 then rupees 1000 can be withdrawn from the point of service from any restaurant or any uh any shop or uh, a showroom as of the moment nobody is using that particular facility that uh, using your debit card and withdrawing the money from a uh, from a mall that's not very common as of the moment but rbi released a proper notification for that so 1000 in tier 1 tier 2 cities and 2000 in tier 3 uh, to tier 6 centers okay so if the population is uh, less than 49999 equal to less than 49999 you can go to a store which has that pos uh, and you can withdraw up to 2000 rupees and that <clears throat> and that pos cannot charge you more than 1% of commission or fee at max 1% so 2000 ke piche 20 rupees sirf theek hai 20 rupees se zyada they cannot charge you anything so if you have uh, withdrawn 2000 rupees they can at max charge you 20 rupees under the partial guarantee offered by the government of india to the public sector banks for purchasing of high rated pooled assets securitized assets of the nbfcs that we have discussed in the very first question the one time guarantee provided by the uh, government of india on the pooled assets would would be valid for how many months from the date of purchase it would be valid for how many months it would be valid for 24 months from the date of purchase and the government is going to provide the guarantee up to 1 lakh crore <coughs> 1 lakh crore <coughs> 1 lakh crore of loans why it is known as partial uh, credit guarantee because uh, guarantee would be provided up to 10% of loss so if a public sector bank purchased uh, loans worth rupees uh, 10000 crore the guarantee is up to rupees 1000 crore agar दस हजार करोड़ का लॉस हो गया द गवर्नमेंट वुड प्रोवाइड रुपीज वन थाउजेंड करोड़ टू दैट पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक सो एंड दैट इज द गारंटी इज वैलिड फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ एंड फॉर नाइंटी डेज इफ द प्रिंसिपल और द इंटरेस्ट 
is due is not paid then that particular loan uh, that uh, for that particular loan the public sector bank can go to the government of india stating that ye, this loan is particularly npa and then pay us uh, the money so for loss of 10 percent the government is going to provide you uh, the the government is going to provide insurance kind of a service to the public sector banks and government is not doing this service for free the government is not doing anything for free the government is charging rupees 25 percent from nbfcs nbfcs or hfcs nbfcs or hfcs to provide this service because nbfcs they are getting the advantage right uh otherwise the public sector banks were not going to purchase the loans of the nbfcs or hfcs uh, but now as the government provided the, the guarantee uh, the government is charging 0.25% from the NBFCs and HFCs. 25% uh, of assets. Of assets sold. Okay. So really, really easy. So students, that's all for today. Uh, I have already started the RBI Grade B 2020 class. And if you like the demo sessions, I would recommend you to join the next year's RBI Grade B class. In which I am providing daily video classes, uh, notes, test series, analysis of Yojana, Kurukshetra, PIBs, RBI and SEBI circulars, uh, even the uh, quizzes that I am providing, this, these are part of that complete course. So you can uh, call me or you can WhatsApp me. You can WhatsApp me or call me on 906720100. Install the Bank Exams Today mobile application or go to learn.bankexamstoday.com. All the links are available in the description. You can join there. Okay. So this is the list of students who cracked uh, that RBA grade B, IBPS, SO marketing, SEBI grade A, NABAD grade A, Vijay Bank credit officer and Bank of India credit officer exams. So that's all for today students. Thank you and have a very, very nice day. Bye.